So this is this is big. We got Ken Ham, the commander of the SES 132 crew. Very good, man. Very and my good. buddy Mike Good, sitting right next to him. What do you guys have like a nickname or something for this crew? Are you guys like the? Uh, we've, we've, do you have anything? What's yeah, been going on around here? Nicknames. Uh, the, the first one I think we had was the Lollygaggers. The Lollygaggers. The Lollygaggers. Uh, yeah. There's some other ones that we probably can't reveal <laughs> to the public. In we general. can edit this. It's okay. Yeah, we can always uh, edit it out. I'm not sure I can trust your editing skills. <laughs> <laughs> Catch me up. We're carrying up a Russian module. All right. Which is very interesting. Yes. Um, it's most interesting because. It attaches to space station in a completely different way that we haven't done before All right. in this business. Typically, when we attach modules, as you know, we kind of come up with a CBM or a uh, what does CBM stand for again? Uh, common common, common birthing mechanism. Which is the big ring. Yep. You get attached stuff. Right. That's the way the whole thing's put together, isn't it? That's right. That's what so put all the right. modules come together with that. Yep. Thing. However, this is mating to the or birthing to the Russian side of oh. the space station, so okay. it has a completely different mechanism. And it uses the uh, same mechanism that's still used in progress use. All right. Which is Russian the, the spaceships. Probe. Yeah. yeah the pro exactly. Right. The Russian visiting vehicles. All right. To bring uh, uh, cargo and people right. up back and forth to the space station. So okay. this docking mechanism is, is meant for a free flyer, which has a little sort of a probe mechanism. All right. And then a receptacle on space station, which is kind of looks like a big old funnel. Yeah. And you fly this probe into the funnel, and it gets guided down into the bottom, and it latches in there, and then right. it's attracted in and makes a hard mating. So okay. There. The difference is, in our case, we yeah. do this robotically. Yes. So we're using the station big arm to take this big old module, right. which weighs about eight tons, almost right. 18,000 pounds. Okay. And basically do the same thing that you would do with a free flyer. You take this module and ram it into the funnel and hopefully get those latches to catch. Okay. And that's the first time that's been done, I bet you, huh? I believe that is the first time. First time. Very cool. So you guys are going to get to do that. And you're carrying this thing up in your payload bay. That's correct. All right. That's in the what do you call this thing? What's the name of it? It's uh, technically called the Mini Research Module Number 1. All right. However, it now has a Russian name. Yep. Rusviet. Which means? Dawn. Like That's very nice. Like the dawn, like the sunrise? Exactly. That's right. That's very nice. Very good. All right, very so good. So we actually tied that into the little description on our logo uh, here. Wow. Which is... It means two things here. It kind of looks like the space shuttle flying off into the sunset. Yes. Because it is kind of marking yeah. the end of the space shuttle. It's the last, the right. last flight of Atlantis. The last flight of space shuttle Atlantis. That's it. As of right now, it's wow. scheduled to be the last flight of Atlantis, which uh, is a big deal for yeah. everything. Yeah. But also, it kind of looks like dawn. So you have the whole rust. Oh, I guess it. So our poet laureate, Gary, yes. on the crew, who developed right. the patch and the words that go in the back, tied it all together. One of the yep. things we got to do was go over to Russia oh. to see it. Yeah. So we went over to and had a little Russia visit. Uh, we went over to Energia in uh, Moscow, and we got to go inside. This and and Energia is their uh, is their, their aerospace uh, company. Is that what that is? Right. Uh, okay. We actually got to climb inside of it, check yeah. it out, climb around outside of it, and now it's uh, it's since been shipped to uh, Florida. So it's uh, in Florida, ready to go or getting ready to go, and we'll pack that in our payload bay and right. take it up with us. And as Ken described, uh, robotically connected up to the rest of the station. But the neat thing about it was being able to go over to Russia. Oh, that is so cool. And so we did that trip as a huh. crew. And uh, that was a good time. You guys get to look around a little bit? Yeah, right. You know, for, Moscow and all. For me, it was the first time I was ever in Russia. Have you been my, I've never been there. My first trip to Russia is right. So yeah. it was a fantastic uh, adventure, so to say. <laughs> yeah. It was a. It was a extremely valuable experience to go actually see this hardware and understand how it worked. Yeah. The Russians were over the top accommodating yeah. and the amount of training they supplied us on how their module works uh, to the point where they had uh, uh, an EVA, a simulated EVA guy, but an actual person inside yeah. one of their Orlan suits showing us, pressurized, showing us how to take the bolts off of uh, wow. the systems we might have to do, which is a Pretty, pretty neat. So you have contingency spacewalks? Is that what you're describing? In, in the yeah. event that this uh, this probe on the end of the yeah. module can't retract, yeah. we, we could be in a situation where we can't put this module back into the payload yeah. to bring it home. So in that case, we have to go outside EVA and remove this whole mechanism off the end. Of the yeah. so it's very, very, very unlikely, but of course we have to train. You know, it was one of the cool things about both you guys are military guys. Correct. Ken, you're a Navy guy. Mike, of course, an Air Force guy. And... Uh, 
you know, what I, what I found, I'm a civilian, but what I found interesting was, you know, of the, year, the way the space program has kind of led to friendship between our countries, because probably when you guys first started your military careers, we weren't exchanging too much information with the with the Russians, right? I mean, and now, and now it's, you know, I think it's a great sign of what the space program is, has helped with, and that's international relations, because now we're working together with those guys uh, hand in hand Absolutely. here. You know, you're going over there, you're getting to see stuff that, you know, years ago you would never gotten a chance to, to see. Right, and uh, for both Mike and I, we're both uh, aviators. Yeah. In our early days in the military, we were quite literally trained and capable of delivering nuclear weapons <laughs> yeah, to yeah. the old Soviet Union. Right. And that took up a lot of our time in the yeah. military. And then, here we are, six months ago, standing in Red Square, <laughs> enjoying <laughs> their their culture like regular old tourists. Yeah. And I, I thought it was really yeah. surreal. Did that hit you? Did you guys think about that when it was going on? It really hit me as we were landing. So we're on this commercial airplane flying over to Moscow, and we're landing in Moscow. We break out through the clouds, and I see the ground over there for the first time. And I thought to myself, you know, this is a little different than I uh, than I trained for, you know, back <laughs> in my old Air Force days. Of, you know, that was that was a target for us. Yeah. So you're right. It's nice to have uh, you know gotten to this point and uh, you know, to be working with them. Yeah. On a, something like this. Much better situation. Yeah. All right. Well, I know you guys are busy. Appreciate you letting me uh, talk with you. Uh, we can hang around because all we're all right. today is right. Well, everybody's outside doing an EVA right now or a simulation. Yeah, so, uh, pretending, of course. Uh, that's right. No that's one's right. really outside. You're not in space right now. But, Correct. Right. Yeah. Uh, our right. EVA guys are on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Of the yeah. Like that, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> that won't that won't happen in space. <laughs> all right. So you got your big sim going here. We'll go see what those other guys are doing. Yep. All right, man. And, uh, Thanks. Yeah, don't forget to oh. say hi to Tony upstairs. He's Tony's our up. IG guy. Is Piers up there too? No, Piers is over driving the big arm. All right, we'll go. We'll go find. We'll go say hi to Tony. We'll surprise him. Right. Thanks. You're the king. You need a carrot. What do you got? I got carrots. Yeah. And uh, wheat thins. All right. Sorry, three alpha. Right. I mean three alpha. Sorry, three alpha. Okay, three alpha. I copy. And uh, I've got glove inspection. And then Steve, you understand why we can't break the torque on the dish, right? So you've been following this whole conversation. Yeah, they they want to be able to bring it home, but as soon as I put turns on there, I can't. Okay, yeah, as long as it makes sense to you. So I got glove inspection, then in, I guess if you want to get in position to do the dish, uh, we can push the rope and hope Garrett's suit is good. What's going on? Nobody panic. The command, the, there's an alarm's going on up there, off up there. We lost Mike, what's going on up there? I have no idea. I'm eating scrambled eggs. What do you got? This is very exciting. Is that what you got, scrambled eggs? Yeah. Is they any good? Yeah, I love them. I love these things. Uh, eating a lot of space food today? I'm going to try it. What's your favorite? Right now? Yeah. <laughs> scrambled, scrambled eggs. Because it's warm? Yeah. It tastes pretty good, actually. Did you have breakfast this morning? Because already it's like lunchtime. Yeah, I know. You know I, mean? <laughs> I, I actually, we started right away. We were trying to get these guys dressed and out the door for yeah. the uh, space walk. So this yeah. is the first time I've had to eat. So I had some coffee earlier, but now I'm having my breakfast. Oh, you're so busy. I, yeah. I got to hurry up and eat my breakfast so I can have my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have lunch before breakfast. <laughs> Do them in order, but it can all be at the same time. Yeah, isn't that what you tell right, me? That's, that's what you, because <laughs> you, you're so busy, you don't have time to, you know, to get your meal going in earlier. I mean, All you right. were one of the great eaters in space. I ate right? a lot, yes. I actually gained weight in space. I eat, I eat pretty well on the ground, too, though. It's like, you know, in, uh, you know. But it takes practice. It does. It's not for everybody. You know, people go, oh, I'm going to eat a lot, and then, and then they get a stomach ache and it's no good. You know, it's not for everybody. Right. Yeah, you need, to, you need to build up to that. Yeah. All right, well, you're doing well there with the eggs. Thanks, Mike.